Good morning and warm welcome to all the participants and our esteemed guest. Uh, I welcome you all to the morning session of the day. Today we have with us Dr. Bindu. Ma'am is principal scientist and head of department in charge fisheries processing, uh, ICR Center Institute of Fisheries Technology, Cochin, Kerala. And the topic chosen by our esteemed guest uh, for deliberation today is packing of fish and fishery products. Ma'am, you are audible as well as visible, and your presentation is also visible. Session recording has also been started. So you can start by uh, getting into slideshow mode. Yeah, perfect. Please start, ma'am. Uh, good morning to all of you. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, I think uh, participants are just joining, but uh, as yeah. per schedule, I'll be. Uh, Around starting. 56 of them have joined. Okay, that's very nice. Uh, first of all, thanks for this opportunity, and we are happy to uh, do this training program along with NADCL and the SKUAST. And uh, today my topic is uh, packaging of uh, fish and fishery products. So we all know the importance of packaging. Any commodity, whatever it is, unless you pack, you cannot market or transport it from one place to another. And similar is the case with uh, fish and fishery products. And uh, the importance of packaging for food, because uh, for food itself, food packaging is very essential because uh, part of the supply chain, food supply chain, any commodity or any produce that is uh, grown or uh, caught in, a, in an area, if it has to be transported from that place to another, it has to be uh, packed. And packaging can be called as a process of wrapping or covering or packing into a goods into a product and uh, with an outer cover. It is also an external means of preservation of food during storage, transportation, and distribution. Packaging also helps to protect from potential damage, degradation. At the same time, it ensures safety, hygiene, and actively reduce food waste. It is estimated that nearly 30% of the food uh, produced in globally is deposited in landfills due to spoilage. This may be because of poor packaging or transportation or harvesting practices. So when you look at packaging, packaging uh, is very important. In nature itself, um, most things, you, you take a simple example of a banana, uh, it comes wrapped or with a peel so that uh, when you want to consume it, you just peel it off, peel the skin off and then you eat the banana. But in case you peel it off and you keep it exposed, uh, for a day, it gets spoiled. Within half a day, it changes color and it gets spoiled. Similar with coconuts. We have to pack coconut. You have an external skin, then you have a hard husk, and then you have a nut or a shell on it. If you break open the shell, the coconut will not stay for even a day. It will get spoiled if you... But inside the hard shell and the external husk, it will stay for months and maybe for a year also without spoiling. So pack packaging not only for food, for any any commodity or any any uh, any product, packaging is very essential. The main uh, uh, functions of packaging you can say is protection. Protection can be uh, mainly to protect the product from uh, external uh, climatic change or environmental condition, and then by protecting the uh, product that is developed, you also preserve it. You want to keep it for a longer period. You have a different, uh, depending on the type of commodity, you pack it accordingly so that you can keep it for one month or a six month or one year shelf life. Containment. Containment is basically to hold, especially liquids. Without a suitable packaging, you cannot transport a liquid from one place to another. Similar is the case with your water or oil or any, any liquid for the matter. You need packaging then only you can take it from uh, one place to another. You need presentation. Now with uh, a tough competition in the market, pack uh, packaging acts as a silent salesman. The good the packaging, the colorful packaging, you will be attracted towards it. It helps to promote sale. It gives instructions for handling, usage, storage, display. All those instructions are given on it. Then you have identification and information. Uh, like uh, th those are mainly legal requirements. If it's a vegetarian uh, product, you have a green uh, logo on it. If it's an FSSI uh, logo, you know that uh, it is uh, done as per the FSSI standard. Or different uh, different uh, identification information is given on a packaging. And then 
okay, packaging is also convenience and compliance. It uh, complies to a high authority. It is convenience mainly because unlike uh, earlier times, we used to have bulk packaging. You used to buy things from the store on a bulk form. But now you have even shampoo, bottle, small uh, sachets you have. You have most things comes in sachets and a very, very small convenience so that at a, for a one time use or a one day use, you can uh, use it. So packaging is uh, encompassing uh, all, all activities like the protection, containment, presentation, identification, and, and convenience to the consumer. So when you look at uh, global seafood packaging, you can say that uh, China market is the biggest for seafood packaging. Region-wise, when you look, followed by US, then the ASEAN countries, then India, then only comes Canada, Brazil, and Spain. And uh, every year, there's a compounded annual growth rate of 5%, uh, depending on the type of margin. And uh, when you look, uh, again, China, uh, when you look at the market type, it's mainly fish, then the mollusks, and then the crustaceans. So you can see that phenomenal growth uh, is for packaging of seafood products is there all over the world, especially with China and the Asian countries. And when you look at uh, segment wise, you can say that uh, most of the seafood which is uh, marketed in the pack forms of fish, because fish forms a major portion, then only comes the mollusks, the crustacean and others. And region wise, again, it's Asia Pacific, because we are a thickly populated, we have a lot of thickly populated countries and we are new into the marketing areas. Like uh, we were earlier in the bulk form, we were marketing and products, but now consumerism has increased and most of our product are uh, single or minutely packed. And then there is a high demand, consumer demand, fresh and high quality products. And uh, a lot of uh, innovations have come up in uh, packaging technologies. You see, there are earlier we we just had basic uh, materials like polyethylene polyester polypropylene like that but now we have so many different varieties of packaging in the flexible films in the cartons and also paper based packaging and new materials have also come which are either composite or uh, laminate films so when you look at seafood uh, packaging market by segmentations you can say that uh, new technologies also along with different types of packaging materials new technologies like vacuum pack uh, modified atmosphere packaging active packaging uh, retort technologies and most of the application is in the fresh form uh, process forms uh, maybe only uh, 70 percent 70 percent is the fresh form only 30 percent goes in the frozen and uh, chilled or ready to eat forms and uh, when you look at the materials, mainly plastics, they form a major portion of it. Uh, high density polyethylene, low density polyethylene, PP, polyamide, PET, PVC, many different types of packaging materials are there. Along with that, paper and paperboard, metal, because all the cans, and then glass and other wood and fiber also to a small extent, mainly uh, not in the primary packaging, but in the tertiary packaging. And different types of uh, forms are there, trays, bags, cans, boxes, jars, films, and region-wise also. So when you, you can classify packaging in different forms based on the material that you use for packaging, the types of packaging, and uh, um, uh, the systems of packaging, different forms are there. But when you look at basically any food commodity, be it fish or any other food or anything, you have a primary packing. And the primary packing is the one which holds the product initially or holds it in direct contact with the product. And a, a number of primary pack products are put together or grouped together to form a secondary packing. And then uh, they, they may be cling wrapped together or uh, uh, tied together. And then you have a tertiary packing, which is mainly the outer covering, which is usually the corrugated fiber board, which is used for bulk handling, warehousing, and transport. And then the basic materials that you use for packaging earlier, a lot of earthen pots, it's uh, maybe in high end restaurants, you know, it's coming back in different way in catering and this online business also for some specific products it's coming, but more, mainly for fish, what we are using is uh, paper based products are there mainly for the tertiary packaging. You, we have used a lot of glass, uh, 
for bottles and uh, containers for marinade uh, bottles like that then we have metals we have cans that is tin uh, tin cans tin tree uh, steel cans aluminium cans then we have the plastic which is rigid uh, it can be flexible or rigid rigid is mainly the thermoform containers so these are the basic packaging materials which are used for all food commodities and similar is the case with uh, fish products also so when you look at paper and paperboard uh, basically small time it is not uh, used for a long duration or duration it is for a one time use where you uh, small or retail or in the bulk uh, mainly as an external uh, packaging and all types of products can be used but the problem with it you can with paper is you can make it into any shape any any size you can have it into a cup or a box or a tetra pack or anything and because of the cellulose fibers uh, with impact it gives some uh, uh, shock resistance and it can offer good rigidity also it is cheap and it is uh, readily available but with moist food like fish uh, or any other wet food you need some sort of lamination because paper when it gets wet it gets uh, soggy and it can tends to absorb the moisture so the external protection of that product may not be there during long uh, duration of storage or transportation but for a one time use if uh, you get a lot of uh, especially in the high end uh, hotels and restaurants you know your fish fingers cutlets burgers and things like that are all packed in uh, paper and paperboard containers then we have glass they say the best uh, material for packing and storage is glass because it is chemically inert it doesn't react with any any components uh, of the product or material which it is packed with and you have a long term duration and an extended shelf life in a glass bottle it's transparent you can see the colors what it is microwave overable and it's inert that those are the main advantages but uh, again uh, disadvantages of glass containers are that they are very heavy and they are fragile they get, you have to handle it carefully but still many of our products like fish pickles uh, they are still packed in uh, glass containers and uh, they are costlier than plastic containers and disposable issues also if it breaks it is difficult to dispose and things like that but uh, whatever it is any product that is packed in a glass container will be kept or can be kept for a very long duration those are the advantages of glass containers at the same time if you are uh, glass because it's of its heaviness if you have to transport it from one place to another it uses a lot of bulk space uh, it has to be it adds to the cost of the freight because uh, when you are marketing a product many things play into it other than the product uh, the cost of the freight if i am taking from kochi to delhi there is a freight charge along with it more the weight of the product more will be the freight and handling charges so glass adds a lot to the freight charges also so people go for lesser or uh, plastic bottles where uh, the weight of the product can be uh, reduced then we have the tin plate uh, containers which are basically low carbon still covered with tin on both sides where uh, uh, earlier earlier times even now some of the uh, older uh, canning companies in india are still marketing in uh, tin cans um, the advantage of this is uh, you need an acid resistant lacquer or a sulfur resistant lacquer acid resistant mainly for mango or fruits and vegetables and uh, sulfur resistant uh, lacquer is coated on the tin can so that it doesn't uh, react with the sulfur and the uh, fish that it is packed with the advantage is, is that uh, it is light in weight very rigid and strong it cannot uh, it can be it is very appealing and because of the lacquer it is also cor corrosion resistance a number of products uh, even now i think uh, baby corns uh, many uh, mushrooms uh fish products also uh, even now they are marketed in uh, tin plate cans then we have an uh, uh, from tin plate we have come to tin free steel cans which has an uh, which is ultraplating of steel with chromium and it is a, it's called a universal can and it has a universal it's a polymer coating is there and it's a universal can where we can use it for acid foods or non acid foods you can use it for fruits vegetables uh, meat seafood and the advantages of it is you know, it has an 
uh, easy open end where you can have a tab and you can easily open it. Just like our uh, Coke bottles or uh, uh, cans like that, where you can just uh, have a cap and then uh, open it and then use it. And uh, because of the chromium, there's no uh, rusting or corrosion of the can. And it, it also can uh, withstand high internal pressure and suitable for fish. And you can attractively print on it. That is one advantage of that. And uh, the problem is only this thing is you can't recycle it or uh, reuse it because you can't. It is it is uh, it is a mold form and uh, it cannot be reused or soldering or welding or things cannot be done. Whereas in a tin can that uh, that can be done. Then we have aluminium containers also. A lot of products are uh, marketed in aluminium containers. It's um, uh, more or less an alternative for tin uh, tin cans. It is light in the advantage of aluminum. It's light in weight. It can be recyclable. And uh, along with aluminum, other some metals are also uh, present in it, like silicon, iron, zinc, copper. And mainly it is used for beverages. And a lot of beverages are packed in aluminum containers and also uh, fishes. Aluminum foils are also used in a large way for grilling, for fried fish for packing uh, fish. The advantage is that it's easily available, abundantly available, easy to fabricate, um, but um, it is non-toxic and no metal. Like any other metal, uh, there's no Im uh, what imparting of the metal taste to the product that it is packed in. But uh, some, some of the metals react with the aluminum or some of the food components react with the aluminum and may bleach with some pigmented food, which is not uh, desirable in the uh, food product. Aluminium is also widely used. Made. Now you can see that most of these hot foods uh, with paper based and an aluminium coated. Many of these caterers, they uh, they use those type uh, like uh, chapatis, porotas and all are mainly packed like that. You have a paper based and you have an aluminium coating on the top and then it is all these hot food is packed in uh, these containers. Then we have a rigid uh, plastic containers. These are basically thermoform containers, uh, PVC or high density polyethylene, low density polyethylene, high impact polypropylene. All those containers are mainly, uh, the advantages of thermoforming is you can make it, if you have a mold, you can uh, make it into any shape or any size, depending on what you want, what, what is the product you want to pack in it. And both uh, transparent and non-transparent uh, containers are there. They are cheap, they are rigid, and they are recyclable. And uh, some of them, uh, they can be reused also. But the disadvantages are that, that uh, uh, they have a lower stability than glass and may react with high acid, acidic foods. There may be some leaching. If you pack a high acid food in a... This thing, there may be some leaching of the compounds of the polymer into the uh, food. But uh, you can see that now with catering business coming up in a big way uh, and all this online uh, food done on most of the uh, food, hot food is packed in polypropylene containers uh, because polypropylene can withstand higher temperatures and uh, virgin polypropylene we also uh, containers are used because back in other containers sometimes there may be uh, what uh, melting of the containers or the disfiguration of the containers may be seen. So hot foods mostly polypropylene or a multi-layer uh, polypropylene or other uh, materials are used. Uh, flexible packaging, uh, plastic packaging, you can say that a large number, most of the trade in the international market uh, is uh, by using flexible packaging material. It can be basic, it can be a monolayer where it is just a polyethylene or a polypropylene or it can be multi-layer where one or two materials are uh, co-extruded together or laminated together to get the advantages of uh, of the uh, of both the films. So the advantages of flexible packaging material is that uh, it will help you to reduce the material use, unlike glass or rigid containers where it occupies a bigger space. It is light in weight and uh, requires less uh, storage space, especially. Uh, when you buy, uh, even uh, if you buy 100 cans, uh, it may occupy uh, a larger space. But when you buy 100 uh, pouches, 
it will uh, occupy less space because you can uh, flat it up together and make it a small bundle and so that is advantage even before packing and after packing also the advantages of flexible it is easy to dispose it will maintain the freshness because of its good properties it will maintain its freshness it will reduce the breakage because unlike glass there will be breakage that can be reduced and uh, reduce the transportation cost and uh, it is economical the only disadvantage is is that it is not biodegradable it goes into the environment and uh, to a certain extent uh, some of these uh, mono layers are recyclable but sometimes uh, these films are along with uh, made with some aluminium or laminates are there so if you want to recycle it you will have to separate out everything and then only you can recycle it so uh, they have the disadvantages of that also but once it goes to the landfill you see that um, it doesn't biodegrade and uh, in landfills more than uh, 500 to 1000 years or more much more than that it will remain in the soil so those are the disadvantages and ultimately it will soak all the drains all the water bodies then finally it will reach the oceans and uh, you can see that many of the uh, fishes and all have a plastic content in their uh, body it may be because of the plastic or the microplastics which have uh, which have come because of the degradation of um, slow degradation of these uh, flexible packaging material. So uh, just uh, I just put uh, some different types of the most common ones are polyethylene, low density, high density, linear, low density, polyethylene, polypropylene, polyester, polyamide or nylon, polyvinyl chloride, polystyrene. Many much more are there. Uh, I have not named uh, any uh, more than this, but uh, you see that other than this, this are single pl plastics, a monolayer plastic, but you have multi-layer or laminates or extruded, co-extruded films, which gives better properties. So basically with all these films, uh, why we are uh, looking at uh, when, when we go to, when we want to pack a particular type of fish product, it can be different forms. So you can't use the same packaging material for dried fish, for fresh fish or a thermal processed fish product. So we have to look at some basic uh, requirements are there. Mainly uh, food packaging, we have to look at the migration. Migration is when we make uh, plastic films, a lot of um, what compatibilizers, uh, plasticizers are used in it. And uh, you should see that um, if any food is packed in it, those, uh, those components do not migrate into the uh, packed food. So for the different types of tests are there when we look for water extraction, heptane, uh, if you're packing a fat or acidic, uh, we look for acetic acid extraction or even ethanol extraction is done. Different types of uh, norms are there. USFPA has given uh, different migration uh, depending on the type of product you want to pack in it and uh, the limits, everything is given in there. Then whatever packaging material, the taste and uh, smell has to be neutral. You cannot have a packaging material that stings or has an off taste because that off taste may be imparted to the uh, food that you pa packed in it. Some of the packaging uh, requires a barrier to light, a barrier to oxygen because anything that you pack in it, uh, if it's a fatty food and you, uh, you have a, a packaging material with high oxygen transmission, uh, it will go rancid and you cannot uh, keep the product for a long period. Uh, barrier to water vapor if you're packing chips in paper what will happen is uh, because of the high barrier it will go soggy and uh, you cannot use it so depending on type of packaging uh, pack product you have to design your packaging material also so barrier to aroma uh, dry fish if you pack in polythene after some time you will see that the smell has come out and you can so you have to go for laminate films then packaging materials uh, should have some tensile uh, strength and then it should be machinable and it should be have good sealing prop any packaging material what we say is it should be heat sealable and all you can say it's a container for packing but uh, some of the biodegradable are not heat sealable but you can use it as a wrap but just a primary wrap you cannot use it as a tech, uh, secondary or a tertiary uh, packaging material and then packaging material should be reusable it should be have properties of recycling and price ultimately it is a price any product or any commodity that you develop and you want to market it 
it is uh, and you want to pack it and market it you have to look at the price also with all these uh, uh, properties and also the price you will be deciding your product so different packaging materials have uh, different otr there's oxygen transmission rate and wetr uh, rate so aluminium foils have the best uh, barrier properties both are less than EVOH depending on the low density polyethylene uh, lower down you can see that they have uh, high oxygen transmission rate uh, followed by polystyrene like the different types of packaging materials if you are using a laminate polyester polythene laminate uh, 235 is the oxygen transmission rate and whatever you put on so different materials have different uh, transmission rate and based on that it all depends on the transmission rate then the thickness of the packaging material all that so you must have seen uh, plastic packaging material you must have seen these codes any any plastic container uh, uh, you take uh, if you look at the back or the bottom of it you would have see these codes and uh, with one two three four or uh, five six up to seven these are mandatory codes which have to be put um, uh, uh, in the bottom of our packaging material even in plastic uh, this carry bags shopping bags on this uh, you you can see these codes on it so that uh, you know that it is a, a polyethylene or a ldp low density polyethylene or a, whatever the type of film so uh, the first code is pet all your pet bottles uh, where all your juices all this mango uh, juices taza uh, Coca-Cola bottles, uh, Fanta, and all that comes in uh, pet bottles. And then you have HDP, all our uh, milk, juices, yogurt, curd, shampoo bottles, bleach bottles, ice boxes, where fish is transported, the big ice boxes are all HDP. Uh, please continue ma'am i am muted uh, all yeah yeah uh, po uh, polyvinyl chloride packaging sheets uh, uh, pipes fittings blood bags and also uh, some uh, uh, films and sheets flow coverings those are the materials and ldp mainly for frozen foods because our international trade uh, mainly is uh, the fish that we export it goes majority in the frozen forms from india and most of the packaging is either low density polyethylene polyethylene for bulk and also for for iqf that is individually quick frozen or single it is polyester polythene laminate and uh, frozen packaging and also for squeezy bottles also ldp is used uh, polypropylene uh, for hot foods uh, and also for retortable pouches, cast polypropylene, which forms the inner layer of it. Uh, polystyrene uh, lids, cups, uh, bottles, and trays, meat trays, egg trays, many of the uh, ice cream trays, food service applications, they are using that. And then seven is multi layer combinations. It can be uh, PLA, polylactic acid, which is uh, upcoming, uh, or not upcoming, it's already in the market uh, from uh, what natural sources. And then uh, plastic bottle, polycarbonates, plastic bottles, sippy cups, uh, sports bottles, and many other things which come. Any other thing which is not ranked one to six, they give the number seven. And you can say that it is some other uh, packaging material. So when we come to packaging of fish, you have fresh fish, uh, high density uh, polyethylene, polypropylene, high molecular HDP, fresh frozen laminates or co-extruded pouches, dried usually HDP woven sacks and laminate, modified atmosphere packaging also, you need good barrier properties so the nylon or PVC molded trays with laminate and polyester polythene or EVOH based films. Thermal process, metal cans, retort pouches, high impact polypropylene trays, surumi, again LDHD co extruded films uh, with waxed uh, duplex board or five ply corrugated fiber board. Sausages, fish sausages, PVDC, uh, polyamide, PP, and natural casings. 
and mainly for battered and breaded products, thermoform containers, and for pickles, glass bottles, or PSP with the co extruded films. So just uh, briefly going to some of the currently used uh, packaging systems for fi fresh fish, mainly air pack. Most of the fish that is marketed, it is in the air pack form. And then uh, vacuum packing is also done because the advantage of vacuum packing is by removing the oxygen, you're reducing the oxidative changes as well as the growth, inhibiting the growth of aerobic microorganisms. So most of the uh, thing which you get in the market, uh, fish is in the air pack form. But if you want to extend the shelf life for a longer period, maybe 10 days more, you may get in vacuum pack. But the thing about vacuum pack is you have to make sure that you always keep the temperature of that fish uh, at very low uh, or below 3 degrees centigrade. So that uh, other uh, non-aerobic, anaerobic uh, microorganisms do not uh, proliferate or grow in it. Then you have the modified atmosphere packaging where you alter the um, uh, what uh, the conditions of the air inside the uh, packaging material, uh, the major gases. By altering this, you will uh, minimize the degradation of the microorganisms and development of oxidative rancidity. And uh, the major gases that we use are carbon dioxide, oxygen, and nitrogen. And for fatty fishes, it's usually the combinations are 60 uh, carbon dioxide and nitrogen. We do not use oxygen because oxygen may uh, what enhance the oxidative rancidity whereas for lean fishes usually uh, uh, 40 30 30 that is carbon dioxide nitrogen and oxygen and uh, we have we need to have a separate machine for that uh, where you have you mix the combination of gases and then that gas is injected into a tray or you can have a pouch also this machine here has a facility for packing trays in it and the gas is injected and then uh, it is monitored uh, uh, throughout the period of the storage um, by using a gas analyzer. So we can know that how much of uh, carbon dioxide has been used up. And uh, when we use carbon dioxide, it forms a weak carbonic acid and uh, uh, will reduce the pH. So those things can be monitored over a period of time. An active packaging is also another packaging uh, which is now uh, mainly uh, uh, in India uh, where I've seen this Haldirams, all these uh, sweets, most of these sweets, uh, they have an oxygen absorber inside that, uh, inside their containers. High-end sweets which are very costly, most of them have an oxygen absorber. Many, many commodities, high-end products are sweets and marketed in such form the the condition or the storage of that pack uh, product inside it is maintained throughout to extend the shelf life and the safety of the product while maintaining the quality and this this application can be used in uh, fish also we have oxygen scavenging where any oxygen which comes out from the product can be absorbed using uh, oxygen scavengers or carbon dioxide or water scavengers and also we have carbon dioxide releasing systems also you can you can design these systems and most a lot of work have been done in our institute on active packaging uh, for extending shelf life of fish products a similar thing is uh, which is uh, in thing now is intelligent packaging here also you can monitor the condition of the packed product to give information of the quality of uh, of the product during transportation and storage it is it can be an internal or an external indicator you have leakage indicator freshness indicator time temperature like during a period of storage how the product quality of the product changes you have pathogen indicators expiry date indicators and uh, a lot of uh, such things uh, it is used in milk uh, milk uh, for the storage of milk and many other uh, commodities also so freshness indicators, uh, we have done a lot of work on in our institute on freshness indicators. Uh, spoilage or lack of freshness in addition to the temperature abuse or package leakage. Especially if you if you use a freshness indicators, what we see is a lot of uh, fish and also meat and many other products are stored in supermarkets. So what uh, many times uh, supermarkets, uh, it is there for display and you take it sometimes the product has a maybe having a shelf life of seven days but uh, what happens in the night most of these uh, cabinets or the chiller units to save in a current or a 
power uh, it is shut off and then only next day morning it is uh, the same so if there is an abuse of temperature or uh, if there is a change in the temperature if this product has to be stored at uh, 3 degree or 2 to 3 degree if that uh, by shutting down the freezer the temperature goes to 10 uh, and then uh, next day uh, you you again keep it when the consumer comes next day you again keep it at 2 to 3 uh, the consumer by looking at the indicator on top he can is able to see and pro, uh, understand that this has been temperature abused or it has gone because there's a change in the color of the uh, temperature or uh, this thing so in order to uh, indicate that uh, we can use this freshness and time temperature indicators and for designing these freshness indicators it's based, uh, basically based on the volatile metabolites during aging or storage carbon dioxide and mines and mines ammonia and hydrogen sulfide and SIFT also one uh, one of our scientists dr mohan he has been working a lot on this uh, freshness indicators and he has developed some uh, paper with the ph sensitive dyes and he has uh, studied uh, uh, both freshwater and also marine uh, fish species and this spoil is during a period uh, of storage and uh, based on that uh, fish dot fish freshness dot have been uh, uh, designed and we are using it uh, on trays so that uh, by looking at the label you can see that it is good it is acceptable by the change of the color from the yellow it changes uh, you can see that in that over a period of storage of spoilage up to nine so you can uh, by seeing it just if you go to the supermarket and you just uh, take the product by seeing this dot you can see that if you should take it you should accept it or reject it uh, there are other smart uh, food packaging uh, uh, also by using a membrane film sensor with encapsulated fluorescent dye uh, towards and uh, maybe by using your phone uh, you can check the freshness of the uh, packaging uh, uh, product inside that's a smart sensor it's it's available in other but in our i don't know if it's uh, uh, it's in vogue in india but uh, in other foreign countries it's being used to check freshness uh, without opening the packet and uh, mainly because of the changes in the pH and uh, food packaging which is directly with the food. So when you compare uh, these advanced packaging, uh, you can say that vacuum packaging, 10 to 20 days you have an extended shelf life, air maybe 3 to 4 days or maximum of 7 days depend depending on the type of product or the fish and the fat content of the fish. And then you have modified atmosphere packaging where you can extend up to 30 days and active packaging also again 10 to days and uh, each each packaging is uh, different and uh, depending on your investment you can uh, decide on what packaging material you want to use for marketing for packaging not material system so that is about the different systems which i invoke this just i'll just go through different types of uh, uh, packaging for fresh fish most uh, commonly used are uh, puff insulated hdp or puff, puff insulated containers because of their durability uh, thermoforming containers also used for uh, for air freight because uh, they are light and uh, they can be it's uh, thermoform containers are mainly expanded polystyrene containers but uh, for road transportation mainly puff insulated uh, containers or hd boxes are used uh, dried fish uh, you can see earlier conditions uh, palmyra coconut leaf baskets were used but now that ages change we have most of our commodities in the market are in um, uh, polythene containers or uh, trays and the best uh, packaging material is 12 micron plain po polyester laminated with 150 gauge low poly uh, low density polyethylene because if you just pack it in polyethylene the smell the aroma of the dry fish will come out but if you have a laminate film it will not come out and uh, metalized polyester with ldp laminated with poly polyester pvc is also used and for bulk packing multi-wall paper packing is used and also HDP woven sacks are used. Uh, accelerated freeze-dried products, uh, it's a niche market, very little products, but there are products 
as accelerated free trade products are exported from our country and also it is locally also it is available so mainly uh, small size because uh, uh, not big fishes but mostly uh, prawns and uh, also feed a lot of brine shrimp daphnia and all for feed in the aquaculture industry is marketed in uh, accelerated free stripe forms and uh, because they are very dried moisture content less than two there is always it is very high these materials are very hygroscopic in nature and they tend to absorb uh, moisture at the same time uh, they also uh, uh, they also readily uh, undergo oxidative changes if exposed to air. So laminates of paper, aluminum foil, polyethylene, or PET bottles and met metal containers are used. And because they're very brittle, just like our lace, uh, our uh, chips, uh, lace is packed in metallized polyester, uh, polythene laminates. Because they are very, uh, you have to see that uh, oxygen doesn't get into it. Uh, it is not exposed. Water vapor also doesn't get into it. So the aluminum foil coating or metallized aluminum foil is there on the inner uh, this thing. And also same time it is nitrogen flush so that there is no, uh, on impact it doesn't uh, break down a powder. Because uh, nitrogen acts, acts a nitrogen gas which is flushed inside acts as a cushioning agent and at the same time gives protection to it. For frozen fish, uh, mainly conventional uh, block frozen. Uh, from India, most of the in conventional block frozen or IQF or semi IQF, that's what they say. And in both uh, IQF requirements, uh, it vary. Most of the uh, block frozen, uh, it's uh, maybe 2 kg, 4 kg. Uh, it goes in plate freezers. It is uh, packed in uh, frozen in plate freezers. And then uh, mostly polyethylene uh, covers are used. And then uh, along with glaze, glaze is water which is added so that there is no. Uh, freezer burn during storage or moisture loss from the surface of the uh, product. And uh, even uh, in the domestic market, these are all products which are available in the domestic market uh, with tilapia fillet, uh, rohu fish curry cut, pangaceous fillet, pangaceous steaks, different types of product, freshwater fishes, plenty are available and marketed in the local market. Most of them. Um, to give it uh, some uh, sort of rigidity, most of them are packed in trays with an, uh, uh, with an outer. Some of them are top seal, but uh, most of them are packed in trays with a polythene cover. Some of them are packed without a uh, tray also in it. In the case of uh, prawns, uh, shrimps, which is a tiger prawns, they usually uh, frozen in a duplex board, which are lined with laminates and then you cover the board and then it's marketed. A lot of specialty products are also available from shrimp. Uh, very few companies in India are doing, but it's a big uh, industry outside India. We have the butterfly shrimp, shrimp uh, skewers, uh, ebi shrimp, and uh, nobashi shrimp, tempura shrimp, shrimp cocktail. All these products, most of them, because they are very, trims are very delicate and uh, many of them are in the frozen forms. Most of them are packed in trays. It can be uh, polystyrene trays or thermoform trays, expanded polystyrene trays or uh, PP trays or HDP trays. IQF shrimps also, uh, unlike the block, block frozen shrimp, which I showed you earlier, IQF, that is individually quick frozen. Both freshwater anami, uh, tiger, uh, because everything goes as IQF because uh, you can have very small consumer bag and 500 grams, 200 grams and which is uh, easy to use. Uh, you just have to convenience, there is convenience in that. But most of these uh, are individually frozen and they are glazed and they are packed in laminate films. Mostly it is polyester polythene laminate films. And all these individual packs go into a master carton where you have six or ten uh, individual packs in it and then it is uh, marketed. Similar is the case with the battered and breaded. Battered and breaded, you all know, all these cutlet, balls, finger, nuggets. Mo most of these uh, products, uh, you can have it from chicken, you can have it from fish, uh, you can have it from vegetable also. So these products also, it is uh, only maybe 50% maybe the actual fish, the rest may be vegetables or onions or potato. They also, most of them, they're very uh, 
they tend to they they marketed in the frozen farms if they are marketed in the chill farms uh, they are packed in some form uh, trays of pvc high impact polypropylene and hdp a number of products are there and the, these are all local market uh, products fish pop ups breaded and battered fish burger patties popcorn fish frozen cutlet some of them are packed in polythene covers and then they have a outer cupboard or a duplex board some of them as such in polyester polythene or uh, multi layer laminate films surumi is also uh, similar to frozen fish uh, ldp or lldp that is a low linear low density polyethylene uh, covers and then it is packed in wax duplex board and five ply corrugated fiber board, similar to frozen fish only. Thermal process products also, uh, I think you had a detailed class by Dr. Mohan. Uh, I'll just show you the containers. Uh, different types of cans are available. Most of the tin plate, aluminum cans, TFS cans, in different sizes, shapes, you can have whatever, depending on, uh, these are just uh, depicting some of the cans, depending on your type of product you can have. And then easy open end, you have the pull tab, which is very easy. Earlier, you had to have a can opener to open the cans, all the tin cans, which you see on the top. But now you have the TFS cans, which are easy open ends and easily you can manage it. Then you have the flexible retortable pouches also. You have clear pouches where you can see through. You have opaque pouches. You have uh, 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 these clear pouches are, can be coated with aluminum oxide or silicon dioxide to give good properties, barrier properties. You can have printed pouches, stand-up pouches where you can have it on a, on a display, on a table or a shelf. Uh, whatever product it is, you can pack it to. Basically, uh, there are uh, three layers here. Uh, it is four layer, but mainly polypropylene, which is a physical food contact, which is on the inside. Mainly it's cast polypropylene, uh, which is uh, on the inside. And then you have an aluminum file, which gives a barrier. And then, then you have the polyester, which gives good uh, like mechanical strength is there. And you can do a uh, printable surface also for it. Different types of products we have. CIFT has developed on a n number of products and retortable pouches. And then uh, rigid containers are also coming up in a big way in the industry, food and especially in the catering, because some of these rigid containers, the advantages is that uh, you can microwave also in it, some of the containers. You can, you can see the microwave design behind the containers. If you look, you can see that. So the advantage of this is you can process in it, you can pack in it, you can transport, store, and then you can also eat in it by microwave. That is the advantage of this uh, rigid containers. Your uh, cup of noodles, Maggie, and all are containers like that. You can microwave or boil hot water and then use it. A number of products are there uh, which you can uh, use uh, ready to eat on thermoform containers. You have sausages, uh, conventionally sausages from animal industry, but synthetic uh, sausages are there using PVDC and polyamide, polypropylene, and also casings from collagen and cellulose are used widely for developing sausages. Pickles, uh, conventionally glass bottles are the best because they are inert and uh, non-toxic, and then uh, flexible films are also used. For small, uh, for uh, shorter shelf life, and for not not big, uh, like one kg or thing, maybe two hundred grams or one fifty grams, you know, uh, for short duration polyester polythene uh, laminate coextruded film used. But the best is always for pickle because color changes and also the aroma retention of aroma and, and because it's acidic, glass will not react with it. Uh, it will be inert, so uh, glass bottles are the best for people. Soups also are different types of soups because basically hydrolyzed uh, fish protein and other seasoning are there. Uh, metalized polyester film, co-extruded, different types of soup mix and fish soup is available. Sometimes they have it uh, in a container also. The pack, like our uh, most of our tea. Uh, tea powders, this red label tea powder, and on inside they have a metalized coating, and then you have a carton box on the outside. Those type containers I use. 
fish salads also coming up in a big way packaging most of it even paper based fish salads are there uh, aluminum foils are there uh, pp containers are there hdp containers are also used Copper wafers again a number of uh, this thing most of them with uh, multi-layer films with high barrier properties different types of locally market in, in india a lot of products are there pharmaceutical products also a lot are there by products uh, uh, many many uh, uh, products are there but i because of uh, one hour i'm just i'm just i've just put this hdp uh, bottles are used mainly uh, just uh, that was about the fish processing, but uh, I'll just go into other uh, biodegradable packaging material because I'm sure in the future a lot of biodegradable uh, packaging material also will be of uh, will be there in the market. So uh, here we have developed uh, biodegradable packaging uh, with uh, polylactic acid and uh, PBAT. And then uh, we have uh, studied the shelf life of uh, different fish products, and then we found it equally uh, comparable to conventional packaging material. And uh, in fact, some of them are better than the conventional packaging material for that particular product. But uh, most of these packaging material, short time duration only we have studied. And biodegradable uh, packaging, PLA based packaging films are there. Edible films are also from fish protein and seaweed based also we have developed and we have seen the shelf life of different product as a wrap, as a primary wrap with these edible films. A lot of Erica based uh, packaging is there in the market. Some of the dry fish uh, and all, I, this I took from a company. Uh, they are using, uh, because the biodegradable part of it, when you look at that, some of the companies are really looking into biodegradable. And uh, Erica leaf uh, packaging is also very, in work. Bagasse based trays for food catering. A uh, lot of uh, food companies uh, with the waste from Bagasse and Reed are processed. And the advantages is microwave ovenable and fridge also you can keep it. It, it doesn't absorb the moisture. Similar what we, with our studies for short term, uh, with our Raka plates also we have seen that it doesn't absorb moisture during uh, storage. Coconut and coconut fiber based uh, packaging is also for uh, coming up in the beginning. I think uh, the Southeast Asian countries, namely Thailand and Vietnam, are doing very well in this. Um, and Philippines also in coconut and coconut fiber based packaging. Bamboo packaging uh, in fish, uh, plenty. Earlier uh, it was used, I think, even in some, some states, it's still used for raw fish uh, collection from the landing centers for transportation for marketing and also for packaging of uh, dry fish. Banana leaf also, mainly now it's like uh, mainly for packings, uh, packing and cooking some specialty products uh, in it and packaging for short term, for short term catering, short term one to two days shelf life, banana packing. Bioplastics also, a lot of work has been carried out. We have. Uh, Carried out in our in, uh, in our Ravel Center, Vaisak Center, and also in uh, Cochin. Uh, a lot of work is on seaweed-based packaging materials, development of packaging material, and also seaweed-based sachets uh, for use in soup or tea, or things like that. It has been used. Uh, this I just put. Uh, this is about a very successful company in uh, Indonesia. They've developed a, a disposable edible uh, sheets from seaweed packaging, which can dissolve in warm water, can be stored for two years in dry area, and then can be customized into shape and size. And also they have uh, also edible cups from seaweed and other plain uh, plant-based materials, which can be stored in refrigerator for seven days and uh, three days in room temperature with different flavors but it doesn't affect or alter the taste of the drink. So, so much of uh, biodegradable and packaging things are going on. And also this also you must have seen in the net, OHO, uh, where uh, seaweed based uh, packaging, where you can uh, contain uh, sauces or water or anything, any fruit juice or anything in it. And you can just, on the move, you can just have it and eat it. So thank you. I think I've taken, nearly an hour thank, uh, you. thank you so much ma'am 
thank you. Uh, participants, if you have any questions, please ask fast. Any questions? I have turned on your microphones. You can ask questions or send them via chat. There is one uh, nano material coated uh, with fishery products to enhance the shelf life of uh, fishery products. If there are any novel based method currently available in the market or research area focusing, please, ma'am. Uh, nano based. Are any biodegradable packaging materials? Uh, na uh, na nano based uh, chitosan film PLA with nano based chitosan nanocellulose packaging materials are there, but uh, not uh, in the marketable form. I I don't think so. But PLA based films are there. I don't think there is uh, any nano chitosan or nano material in it. But uh, nano material like silicon dioxide uh, and aluminium oxide nanoparticles are incorporated in uh, uh, thermal uh, thermal retortable pouches for clear retortable pouches their nano based uh, materials are used uh, if you good are, afternoon madam yeah, yeah. Uh, madam is there any uh, process difference in acylated freeze dried and freeze dry no, it is same only. Freeze dried products, same only. I mean, in TFS cans, is it in free steel cans, uh, titine is absolutely absent. It's uh, steel in, with chromium coated. Uh, titine uh, is absolutely absent. Yes. Uh, and you told another uh, biodegradable film, uh, PLA based. Uh, what exactly it is, PLA? Well, uh, PLA is polylactic acid from corn or sugar cane. Uh, it is available. It is uh, some companies are marketing polylactic acid based uh, material is available. Resins are available in India. And uh, how does it work? Uh, uh, as a uh, it it, it is um, it is it is just like a resin like polyethylene or. Uh, resin uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can use the solvent to dissolve it and you can uh, plate it the advantage about it is uh, it is heat sealable okay madam uh, madam my last query is about uh, what is hipp what kind of polypropylene hipp uh, uh, that is high impact polypropylene where um, uh, for heating purposes where some modification is done to the polypropylene okay. because polypropylene can be uh, you can go to higher temperatures you can uh, store product at higher temperatures okay madam thank you thank you madam thank you other questions Madam, uh, uh, last one. Uh, uh, this TFN cans also called as uh, easy open cans, no? Easy open, and yes, yes. Okay, madam. Thank you, thank you. Any other question before we call it close for the session? I think there are no further questions, or there is one. I think again, yeah. They're mostly thank yous in the chat, uh, ma'am. On behalf.